Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about some romance books I have been obsessed with recently. So these are my favorite books within the last few months that I would love to talk about, love to just gush about. The first one that I have is Forget Me Not by Julie Soto. I picked up this book a few months ago, I wanna say like a month or two ago. I just picked it up off of a whim because Libby had it available and I had been putting it off for so long because I have a really hard time picking up typed books if you did not know. Um, so Libby was like, oh, it's available, here you go. I was like, why the heck not? I was doing a baking order. I like own a small like gluten-free baking business and I was doing a cookie order like decorating cookies and I could not do anything but just sit there and listen to this <laughs> like I could not I was obsessed I could not put it down okay I was not expecting that heroine of this story she is a wedding planner and she just nabbed the like wedding of the season okay but there's a little bit of a stipulation the couple who is getting married really wants this specific florist to be hired to make the flower arrangements for their wedding. The heroine purposefully does not work with that man because they have history. There's a little bit of a past. So this is a second chance romance between the two of them. He is a grumpity grump. She is a ray of sunshine. Okay, so grumpy sunshine. And she basically has to bite her tongue and ask this man to help her. You're trying to figure out through the book what happened to them, why did they end their relationship, what happened to them all those years ago. It does take place in two different timelines. So the present day chapters are in the heroine's point of view, whereas the chapters that take place in the past are in the heroes. And I loved that dynamic. I believe this was Julie Soto's debut and I'm so excited for the next book. I could not get enough of this. I just wanted to reread it the moment that I finished it. Another one that I just kept wanting to reread is The Friendship Study by Ruby Barrett. First thing that hooked me with this book is the cover. Like that looks like a fantastic snog, okay? I am obsessed. I'm obsessed. These two characters have a mutual friend, okay, that end up setting each other up on a blind date, if you will. It doesn't go the greatest. They're really bored. They don't care for each other. Like, they just want to leave, okay? They don't really care for each other. Also, both of them aren't really in the position to even be in a relationship in the first place, and they both know that, so they just don't even try. Anyway, the date is kind of like, eh, crappy, right? Um, and they expect to never see each other after that point. But then both of them end up signing up to do this friendship study through the local college where they're going to be studying a bunch of adults and how adults form friendships. I loved that part of the book because it is so difficult to make friendships when you're an adult. I don't have many. Okay, let's just say that, okay? And it's really hard. There is this big rule in the study that you are not allowed to get with, fall in love with one of the other study participants. The more time these two spend together, that animosity or dislike, boredom that they had with each other slowly but surely morphs into love. So these two have to keep their romantic relationship a secret during this whole study where they are definitely forbidden to fall in love with each other. There is fantastic representation in here. There's bi representation, um, neurodivergence representation, the hero has chronic pain. I just loved everything about this book. It was so good and um, I need to reread it like now please. The audiobook was fantastic. I had to buy a physical copy. I've not bought myself a lot of books this year, but I had, I had to get this one. If you're wanting an alien romance, I have A Ruling Sick Thand by Victoria Aveline. Oh my word. This is the latest book in the Clicanian series, which is an alien romance series that takes place on this planet called Clicania, where you have the typical storyline of a bunch of human women have been kidnapped from Earth to come to a planet where women are scarce. I definitely recommend reading the series in order because you'll get more out of it, but the gist of the things you need to know before this point is a bunch of human women have been rescued by a certain, like, I think capital city on the planet, but other cities throughout the planet really want to get to know these humans and possibly find their fated mate. So when the aliens on this planet see or are around or spend a long time with people that turn out to be their fated mates, like tattoos will start to form on their bodies and glow and their eyes will change color, I think also. Anyway, so a lot of the other cities are like, this capital needs to spread out the human women because we want to get to know them. So something happens in the previous book to where the heroine of the story gets kidnapped 
by Sikthand, who is the king, the ruler of one of these cities. It's actually the one city I think on the planet that has no technology, which this planet is very tech forward, very advanced. They have like the doors that swish open, the holographic buttons, okay. Very technologically advanced, right? Not this city though. These people actually ride these alien dragon creatures kind of, and the frequency that technology gives off really irritates and frustrates these creatures and they're creatures that they ride like that's their form of transportation and so there is no technology whatsoever in the city which i don't know why i, lo I love that in sci-fi romances it like just breaks everything down like it strips everything down i'm a sucker for that that might be why this is my new favorite in the series i'm obsessed with it anyway this is the uh marriage of convenience romance kind of like arranged marriage between the heroine who is kidnapped by sick fan at the beginning of this book and sick thing. Talk about a grumpy man. A grumpy alien man that I'm obsessed with. I love him. Next is Song of the Abyss by Emma Hamm. This is her newest release. She actually was a doll and released this book months in advance. I think this was supposed to come out in September, if I'm not mistaken, and she just dropped it in May. She was like, here you go. I'm done with it. This is the next book in her, I think, Hidden Waters or Deep Waters? See, I think Deep, Deep Waters series, which is her mermaid merman fantasy-esque romance series that is chef's freaking kiss okay if you want to read about giant like 18 feet long tall whatever you want to say mermen falling for tiny human women please please read these the hero of this story was actually the villain kind of in book number one he actually got his arm chopped off by the hero in book number one um so he only has one arm now. And he has been tasked to go kidnap the daughter to the ruler of this underwater city. But when he goes to kidnap her, he's like a little surprised to find out that she wants to go willingly. She does not like where she lives. Her father is very abusive. She was like, take me, take me, please. Um, the heroine is also hard of hearing. And she has this little Android device that she uses to help like basically closed caption what people say where um she wears these like glass the android has these glasses she puts over her eyes where it'll translate what people are saying um because she can't really hear all that much um because of something her father did to her anyway this is about the two of them falling in love with each other <laughs> um even though he's this big scary merman monster and them trying to take down her father and this very very horrible city i'm back in my dark romance era okay if all of the books in the series were available in libby like right then and there, like available now all of them would probably be on this list but i only got to this one i'm on the waiting list for like all the other ones okay this is corrupt by Penelope Douglas. I've heard fantastic things about this series. I've read a few Penn Douglas books. I've read Birthday Girl, Punk 57, and I think another one, but I'm pretty sure it's their most popular series, I think. This is the start of a dark romance series. Anyway, these four guys go out on Devil's Night, which I think is like Halloween, I don't know, um, Devil's Night in this town. And they kind of form a ruckus, okay? They get into trouble, they do shenanigans, they do things they probably shouldn't, okay? But it's for one night. It's like the purge one night, okay? They decide to let the heroine of the story, who is a little younger than them, tag along with them in their whirlwind of mayhem, if you will. But at the end of Devil's Night, three of the four of those men end up getting put in jail for a few years. This book starts out years later when they are out of jail and they want justice and revenge because they believe that the heroine is responsible for putting them in jail. This is her romance with the one guy that didn't end up going to jail and he absolutely hates her because he thinks that she's the reason why his friends went to jail. I could not put this book down. This was another audiobook. I was like baking or something and I could not stop listening. I just wanted to listen to it and I needed the next one so bad, but it's not available for me for a few months and it sucks. <laughs> like I'm chomping at the bit for it. Let me know down below what your favorite book in the series is. I would love to know. Next I have a whole author. I just have Anne Gracie books on this list. Anne Gracie, I got hooked onto her books. She's a historical romance author, by the way. I got hooked onto her books because I read The Autumn Bride, which was really Good. Our heroine um, ends up rescuing her sister and two other women from this um, kind of like sex trafficking house, right? Ends up saving their lives and they decide that they're going to be sisters 
from then and there. They're going to do everything. They're going to save up a lot of money, work, because they really want to form like a little life together, all the four of them as sisters in Bath. One night, things are going really bad. Her sister is really, really, really sick and she is desperate for money, anything to save her sister's life. She ends up hopping over to the house next door because the window is open and in a moment of desperation decides like, I just need like a necklace or something. I need to sell something to save my sister's life. Um, she doesn't like how she has to do this. She does not want to be a thief, but she doesn't want her sister to die. But she goes through the window and she notices this old woman is um, in this very barren room, looks absolutely horrible. Like she's been taken care of horribly. She's so sick. It turns out she's this very wealthy lady and um, her staff have been treating her horribly, have been abusing her. And she becomes friends with this old lady and she is so funny. She kind of adopts the sisters as her nieces and it is so stinking cute. But then the old lady, she actually has a nephew and he catches wind that like she's taking care of some nieces and he's like, I don't have any cousins. She doesn't have any nieces. What is going on? So he goes in to investigate and is pretty sure that our heroine is like a, taking advantage of his grandmother. Um, when in actuality, she ended up saving her from the people who were. Anyway, it's their romance. I've read, I think like six other Anne Gracie books since then. This is another case where Libby didn't have um, the other books in that specific series on on their site, on their platform for me. So I just decided to pick up other Anne Gracie books. I've completed a whole another series about marriage of conveniences and I've started a whole another one as well. I just love her books. They're really immersive. They have a great found family trope I've found in every single series that I've read so far. Like the found family is absolutely beautiful, which I love. I love that part of romances, especially historicals. I love historicals where you're able to focus, yes, on the main couple, but I also wanna see the side characters and the family members and characters that will eventually get their own books. So I love love her books so much and like I can't wait to just listen to more. Another historical that I loved is Don't Want You Like a Best Friend. I read this for a vlog where I read romances that had titles that were based off of Taylor Swift lyrics. I'll link that down below if you want to check it out. But I loved this. This was probably my favorite book that I read out of those. This is a sapphic historical. So these two heroines end up becoming best friends when one of them is debuting. The other one has kind of been out for a few seasons. They try and kind of parent trap their parents because their parents have a little bit of a history together where they used to they used to date, used to court. And in the midst of them trying to set their parents up, they actually fall in love with each other. And it is so good. I loved this story. I loved both of these women. I loved just everything about it. I uh, I could not like rave about it enough. It is so stinking cute. Another book that I need to get for my shelves because I was obsessed with it. I talked about this book quite a bunch, but I can't stop thinking about it. This is A Five Minute Life by Emma Scott. <laughs> I loved this book. I don't think I've read a book like this. So Thea is our heroine. She ends up getting in a car accident um, the night of her sister's graduation. She ends up developing amnesia where she forgets everything within five minutes. She ends up living in this psychiatric ward and this is her romance with Jim who just got hired to kind of be um, like a warden I think. I don't know he kind of like cleans up the areas make sure everyone's safe all that jazz. Jim has a stutter and he has lived with his disability like his whole life and he's very self-conscious about it so he just wants to get his job done not make any friends not talk to anybody and be done but he cannot help but be enthralled by Thea and he knows that this is like so wrong he's like she's a patient I'm gonna distance myself but he's starting to notice that Thea might be remembering things when she's talking to him. I love this book so much and both of these characters are absolutely amazing. I love Emma Scott. I love everything that she does, everything that she writes, and this one was one I could not put down. Another contemporary one is Only and Forever by Chloe Lisa, the last book in the Bergman Brothers series. This was a great conclusion. I really liked this. This is the romance between um, Vigo and Tallulah. So they actually knew each other in college for a little bit. They both had one class together, but then Vigo ended up transferring somewhere else, I'm pretty sure. Anyway, Anyway, um, Tallulah now is a, I believe, thriller writer, um, and Vigo is a book connoisseur. He loves books, loves romance books specifically, um, and he also loves meddling in people's love lives. He actually really wants to open up a romance bookstore, so that's what he's going to be doing. Tallulah is actually going to be taking up the spare room um, in the apartment that's attached to the bookstore to help him open it up, get customers in, whatnot, and then he's gonna help her with her thriller novel because she has having like horrible writer's blog, like she's stumped with this book. The two of them fall in love during all this, okay? And I really loved this one. I loved both characters, Vigo 
is a character I really related to. He's seeing everyone around him falling in love, finding their person. And he's like, when is it gonna be my turn? When is it gonna be my turn? Like I, I really related to him. And also he just loves romance books so much and I adore that. And then I really also related to Tallulah. She's a type one diabetic. And just like the discussion of having a chronic condition, I felt for her so hard. There's one scene where her sugar gets really, really, really low in the middle of the night and she just breaks down. She's like, I am sick of this and she can't she can't ever get over it like it's with her her whole life so I oh I relate to that woman so hard like I love her and I just also loved how the series wrapped up this is the last book in the series so we got like a little glimpse into all the little families at the end in this family I'm still waiting on the parents to get their book please please and thank you Chloe and the last one that I would love to mention is the tyrant alphas rejected May by Kate C Wells this is a paranormal romance and I think this is the book that got me like hooked onto paranormal recently like I'm in my season of paranormal romances like specifically wolf shifters okay so this whole series is about rejected mates which I love I love that trope. these two characters are in the same werewolf pack and this werewolf pack is like put off from human society. They're in their own little world in the woods. They don't interact with humans at all. The hero is the alpha of the pack and the heroine finds out, realizes that they are fated mates and he doesn't he doesn't believe that. He's like, there's no way that this one is my mate. Um, so she feels so rejected by him and ends up going to like a witch nearby and telling her to sever their bond. And once that happens, he realizes, oh, I messed up. Like that is actually my mate. And so he decides to grovel his butt off. The heroine also walks with a limp. She has a leg injury. And again, another book that discusses chronic pain really well and being with someone who has a chronic condition. This book had me hooked. I need more rejected mate romances. I need more werewolf romances. We also mentioned how this is a paranormal romance with disability rep. Like, I feel like that's so rare. And I loved that in here. I love how we got to see that. Anyways, there you have it. Those were 10 romances that I am currently obsessed with, cannot stop thinking about. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to and what books you are currently obsessed with. If you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a cup of any sort emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.